Welcome to Mining Over Canada. Join the Canadian Securities Exchange and our partners in a first-hand look into our country's vast mining landscape. Welcome. Mark Francis here with Canadian Securities Exchange for Mining Over Canada. And today we're going to be talking about Canada's leading role, world leading role in mine safety. I have with me today, Ed Hubert. I've known Ed as a friend and colleague for almost 30 years, not quite. First met Ed when he was doing policy work for the province of Manitoba on mining. Since then, he has worked in safety, health and environment. He has served as executive vice president of the Mining Association of Manitoba. He has been the senior environmental manager with De Beers Canada and is currently director of environmental affairs and government relations with Golden Predator Mining Corp. Ed, it's a real pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you very much for asking, Mark, and I appreciate being here. Well, Ed, you've, you've been a, a bit of a, a guide to me as well through the years. Uh, you introduced me to Canadian Institute of Mining, Metallurgy and Petroleum. You introduced me to the issue of mine safety and, uh, and also environmental thing changes that needed to occur that have happened over time and uh, Canada has led. But we're really going to talk about safety today. And uh, uh, can you tell us who the forefather of mine safety was? In my opinion, that would be Neil George, uh, an expat Manitoban who graduated from the University of Manitoba, I believe in the late 30s. And Neil's contribution was that he developed what became known as the Neil George Five Point Safety System. And that was check entrance and travel ways to the workplace, our workplace and equipment in good working order, our employees working properly, do an act of safety on a daily basis and can and will employees continue to work properly. What Neil did was to codify how we approach safety. He said it wasn't helpful to say that this was the safety manager or this was the person that would go around and try to be the internal observer on safety. It became a shared responsibility of the workplace. And this led to what we now know today is the internal responsibility system, obviously, there are much more developed and comprehensive safety systems in place, like the DuPont plan that has over 18 parameters to it and counting. But Neil started it by saying it's an attitude to look at it and to see what are the impediments and how do we identify them. That's interesting. And and now you, you mentioned the things being in clean, good working order and at CIM a year or two back, I heard a presentation from De Beers, for whom you worked, where they said that they have found that the cleanest mines are also their safest and their most profitable. Yeah, I, uh, certainly, I can believe that, and I've seen it. And uh, uh, it's one of those things that it's not directly measurable, but it's observable, and it's how you focus on the day-to-day -day workings in the mine. Neil applied a common sense approach. Uh, the DuPont safety system, which the beer has used in the past, they take a look at items that if they see a worker who might be at risk of falling or slip and fall, it's up to the other uh, worker nearby to intervene and offer or uh, uh, immediate assistance. And again, it comes down to commonplace things and it's not one magic bullet. It's a series of attitudes and behavioral approaches. So when I was first entering the workforce, there was seemed to be an attitude in the uh, riskier professions, mining, construction. Well, we had to face risks. And so young, young buck, you also have to accept the fact that you might get injured or hurt on or die on the on the job. And it seemed to be the, the culture from the top to the bottom. So how was that culture changed? And it took quite, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it took quite a long time to change that culture, right? I think when Neil George first developed his five point system, he went to work at Coppercliff with Inco. And I believe that was around 42 or 43. And in 62, Neil was recruited by the Quebec industry to head up the uh, what was then called the uh, Mines Accident Prevention Association of Quebec. 
and he shared his knowledge and approach of uh, how you harness a collective approach to safety at all the Quebec industry uh, uh, job sites. And later that mushroomed across Canada and also across the world. But it was to change behavior both with the employer and also at the workplace. And that was his main contribution. Now we've taken a look at uh, uh, the current uh, 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 beliefs in mining. And I believe Mine Safety now adopts the principle of zero harm. Nobody should go to work and expect that they leave the work site in any less condition than they started with when they entered the job at the beginning of the day. What a burden to lift from someone psychologically. They probably didn't even know they were living with that terrible burden, but it would also be a productivity burden because if you're going to work uh, the way a soldier might, thinking, well, today I could be injured, today I could die, boy, it certainly changes how you behave, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I was at the Snap Lake mine and we had some of the uh, better trainers from DuPont walk us through our day-to-day -day operations. And one of the things they did was I was going up a staircase. They held on to my, you know, they watched how we walked up a staircase. And most people, you know, are trying to be efficient at the mine because they're on a pretty intense schedule. And he said, have both hands on the rail guys, three point contact, three point contact. And he was very fastidious. And he says, if you fall, slip or hurt yourself, you're not useful to yourself or the company. Come on, let's take a look, slow down a bit, three point contact, go up the staircase. And it was a series of small cases, but they were always trying to identify what are the barriers and how do we assess risk? And the risk management uh, model became critical. And getting back to the, what I said earlier, zero harm, how do we get there? What are the tools? Now, we've got lots of additional tools. We do safety audits. We do uh, best practice reviews. We, we benchmark. Um, that's all part of it. But it comes down to common sense approach at the work site. Well, and how much better for uh, morale when you know that your fellow employees care, even if they don't, it, it, you know, even if it's only in terms of behavior, they care about what happens to you and you are caring about what happens to them. That's really a, that's transformative. And then, the, and it builds trust, which also, by the way, should build productivity and profitability and yep. creative. And, and then you feel you can, you're a part of it. So that, that's quite remarkable. Ed, talk about, you've commented before that the Manitoba mining industry and the industry as a whole has a greatly improved its safety record and is now leading. Do you have any statistics uh, that are examples of that? Well, you mentioned 1992 when we first started working together. And I recall at that time, the lost time injury rate for the mining sector was double digit. I can't give you a specific number, but it was like 15 or 16 lost time injuries uh, um, based on 100,000 hours work of uh, work per year. Uh, today, it's 1.2. 1.2. So they've driven it down to 1.2. And you know, I, I, congratulations to all the workplace safety and health committees, the workers, the unions, and the employers for achieving that. There are two uh, sectors in Manitoba that are slightly lower, but statistically not really much. Uh, I believe the electronic manufacturing group is 0.8. And I believe that uh, the aircraft manufacturing sector is one, but 1.2 versus 1.0, uh, uh, they trade off over the years. So it goes up and down as, as you would expect, but it's quite an accomplishment that at one point they would have been 12, 14 lost time injury rates per year. And in a span of less than 30 years, they've got it down to 1.2. And, and that also shows that it does take time and you can't just walk in and change it overnight uh, because there is a required change in attitudes and approach and people have to learn. And you've got job transitions from workplace to workplace. But um, what other, in, can you give us some other industries, uh, for instance, healthcare or, or manufacturing, what, where are they? Uh, I've got some of that stats right in front of me, Mark. I can tell you that the healthcare sector in Manitoba right now is 3.9 and that's pre-COVID. 
So that would have been for the 2019 numbers. Uh, we have to wait for the 2020 numbers to come out. Manufacturing is 2.4. Um, construction is 3.7. That's both road building and heavy construction. Agriculture is 2.7. Forestry is 4.6. Now, I don't want to take a, a look at in pure isolation. I think Safe Work Manitoba has done a remarkable job working with the work sites, the companies, and the uh, uh, workers in the unions. And they've seriously helped contribute toward getting uh, safe work in Manitoba. Uh, manufacturing has certainly uh, come down a long way from where it was, as, as has construction. And, uh, you know, you have to take into account both the trend lines, just like mining was double digit uh, 28 years ago. And the same is true of the manufacturing and construction sector. The trends are very positive. They're going the right direction. And they're probably going to get down to the same level as mining. But again, that comes down to how they apply as safe work environment and ethic. So Neil George, a mining, Canadian mining engineer, hasn't just impacted safety in mining in Canada. He's impacted safety in mining throughout the world and safety in other industries. Yes, because he, he, Neil can be considered the, the, uh, at least the spiritual father toward bringing workplace safety and health committees up front because that became part of the safety share. And that was his fourth point. Can you talk a little more about how safety share works and how it in, how it makes it the responsibility of everybody? What what he talked about was there must be an act of safety at, on a daily basis at the work site, and that was to be something between the supervisor and the workers where they would talk about an act of safety, and that morphed over time into what we, we now understand to be modern workplace safety and health committees. Now, in order to make this work mark, you also need regulatory support for checks and balances. So most modern uh, mine uh, legislation in Canada, whether it's through their workplace safety and health acts or whether it's through the mining legislation, will require certain standards toward how a workplace safety and health committee work. And they know there's needs for checks and balances, and there's a, a very strong role for government to be a part of this as well. Very interesting. So it, the rest of the world has come along slowly, in places a little more slowly. Uh, do you have any, any anecdotes or anything to share about the rest of the world coming along on mine safety and how Canada is helping lead there? Well, I, I was involved a while back with something called the Global Mining Initiative, and I was part of a team that was dealing with both North America and South America and looking at best practices and talking to many of the firms active in South America and Central America. They were all well aware of the safety program and more or less. There were different stages of development and evolution, but they were still following the same ethic of the basic points of looking for a clean and secure workplace, an observation that the workers have a responsibility to share their observations with the supervisor on a daily basis. And people know that they walk into something that's orderly, well laid out and safe. So Canada, by virtue of being a world leading, a world leader in mining, is spreading as well its leadership in safety as well as environment. Yeah, and that was that always amazed me that I could be talking to my counterparts, whether they were in Brazil or they were down in Peru. The minute you got into the safety culture and talked about lost time injury stats and talked about your safety and health committees, Languages and cultural differences between the countries disappeared, and they were talking about the heart and soul of safety. Oh, very interesting. So safety is a universal culture then, in a way. Yes. yes. That's very interesting. Thank you, Neil George. Can you tell us a little more about what happened with Neil George and the rest of his life? Well, Neil stayed on with the Quebec uh, Mining Association there, I think, until the mid-80s, and he retired. So he, he probably did 20 years in Quebec uh, in the association role. And uh, he lived a, a, a very vibrant life. 
and he passed away in 1988. But the, uh, uh, before his passing, he was nominated by the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame Selection Committee, which is quite an honor. And again, I stand that he was the only safety professional who's listed at the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame. And, and also a Manitoban, which of course you and I are pleased about. Yeah. And he would also, uh, I, I never met him personally, but I've been told by those that did, one thing Neil would always point out, he was a civil engineer, he wasn't a mining engineer, and there's a role for uh, all dis different disciplines in, in mine rescue, mine safety. It doesn't matter if you're the accountant or you're a policy person or your safety and health or you're a miner, everyone has a role in safety. Well, Ed, that was an excellent point on which to close, but do you have a final comment to make about safety and Canada's leadership in the world? I'd like to uh, comment that based on the contribution of Neil George, as well as the various uh, members of our mind safety community and the industry in general, we are world leaders in mind safety and we are pursuing zero harm. And nobody should have to walk into their work site with fear and trepidation that yes, they're in a high risk environment, but managed properly, they can go home in the same state, both mentally, physically, as they were when they came into work in the beginning of the day. And that's probably the most important contribution that Canada has offered. That's wonderful. Ed, thank you very much. This has been Mark Francis with Canadian Securities Exchange, speaking with Ed Hubert, longtime practitioner of, regarding health, environment and safety in the mining world. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Mark.